these are the jigs that I tied today. Uh, yeah, if I sound a little excited and if you think I'm a little too impressed with myself, please forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Iowa Pan Fishing. This is our dog, Roxy. Roxy is a Chihuahua mix. Uh, about seven and a half years old. About 18 pounds. So she's a few times larger than a Chihuahua. We don't, we're not sure exactly all of what's in her. But she's the best dog we've ever had. Hey, uh, I wanted to uh, take some time today to do a couple of things. One is to remind everybody that uh, I am doing a contest here on the Iowa Pan Fishing Channel. And the prize is I'm going to uh, bless a couple of fishermen here in the United States with their 2023 fishing license. So I'm going to put a link in the description below for the video uh, that talks all about that and uh, where you can enter that contest, that drawing. Uh, and uh, and there will also be a link here at the end of the, the video as well. So I wanted to tell you about that. The other thing is, is that I've entered into the realm of jig tying. <laughs> tied my first jigs today, tied six jigs today. And so what I'd like to do is uh, go over my setup, uh, go over some of the uh, materials and tools uh, that are necessary to start jig tying, and uh, look, I, I don't claim any expertise at all. Uh, I tied my first jigs today. Uh, but I've been learning a lot. And uh, maybe some of you are thinking about starting to tie your own jigs. And, and so uh, maybe I could help you get started. All right. So let me show you what I've got. All right. So here in our humble home downstairs, we've got uh, uh, an extra room, extra bedroom. And I'll come down here to do some writing from time to time. And and uh, a few years back, I picked up this, oh, I guess what now is an antique desk, about 60 years old, and uh, use it for writing and doing work and things like that. And I've been, I've been thinking, uh, as I've been getting ready to start tying jigs, well, where am I going to put all my stuff? Well, this desk has everything I need. It's got couple of compartments here. I've got all of my materials in here. I've got my tools in here. I've got uh, my my threads and uh, jig heads in here. I've got a flat, nice flat surface with plenty of room to work. Easy place to mount, uh, mount my vise. And so this has turned out to be a, a really nice spot to work. I'm not going to be relegated to my garage and freeze here in an Iowa winter. Uh, nice place to do the work. It's out of the way. I'm not cluttering anything up in other parts of the house, and so it's a good spot. So what I'd like to do is I would like to go over some of the equipment I have, some of the tools, and uh, some of the materials that I picked up in order to get started uh, jig tying. Now, right off the bat, I want to let you know I'm a novice. I tied my very first jigs today. Uh, so, so this is for informational purposes only. Uh, if you're thinking about tying your own jigs, uh, if you want to get started, uh, I'm going to help hopefully do for you what other fishing channels has done for me. And they showed me what to get, showed me uh, what to purchase, what I needed, what was necessary, and then showed me some of the basic techniques. Now, I am not ready for prime time. 
<laughs> Again, I just tied my first six jigs today, so uh, I don't yet feel comfortable or confident enough uh, to be able to tie any in front of a camera, uh, but I'm hoping to be able to do that soon. Uh, I can tell you this, though. <clears throat> there is something therapeutic about tying jigs or tying flies. I found it to be relaxing. Uh, it was fun watching these jigs come together to actually create something, make something with my own hands. <clears throat> Pardon me. And uh, of course, I'm looking forward to trying them out tomorrow. I'm going to be going out to Jasper County to Jeff and Jan's pond, presuming that it's not frozen over. It. Uh, we had a pretty cold day yesterday, but the water's been open on his pond uh, through this cold snap. Uh, it won't be long before it will be permanently iced over for the winter. But I'm hoping to go out there tomorrow, catch some big bluegill and crappie and maybe some bass uh, so I can bring home a bunch of fillets for members of my church family. And I'm going to try these six jigs to see if I could catch anything. Now, uh, the, the patterns that I have in these first six jigs, they're, they may not necessarily be the best combinations, but they were the materials I picked up. I wanted to, I wanted to just get something so I could get started. And as I watch more videos and uh, see more pattern combinations, color combinations, uh, different materials being used, then I will add to the, the collection of materials I have and, and widen the repertoire of jigs that I, that I tie. So, but uh, you got to have tools, right? You got to have tools. And uh, I think probably the most important tool uh, that you need for tying jigs is a vise is a vice. Now, there are all kinds of different vices, um, and uh, they range in price from $20 to several hundred dollars. This is mine. This is the one that I'm using. I'm going to put links. I'm going to put links in the uh, comment section below for everything I show you, but I'm going to show you here as well. Uh, the vice that I got, and I think it ran me $70, $80, is the Odyssey Spider Fly Tying Vice by Griffin, Griffin with an I, two eyes, Griffin Enterprises. That's the uh, vice that I have. Uh, it's easy to put together, uh, pretty simple to adjust and use. So simple, Tony with Iowa Pan Fishing can use it. And I proved that true today. So you need, you need a vice. Um, and these tools are not from now, uh, from this point on, aren't in any uh, particular order. They're just how I have them stacked in front of me. One of the things you are going to want to pick up is a whip finishing tool. A whip finishing tool. And again, all the links will be below. Uh, the whip finish knot is the final knot uh, that really holds everything together, tightens everything down uh, when you're tying a jig. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice. I spent, I spent a couple of hours uh, not tying uh, or finishing a jig, but just practicing the whip finishing knot and using the whip finishing tool on a bare uh, jig head and hook. So, uh, but I'm starting to get the hang of it. Still need more practice, but I was able to uh, whip finish uh, on all six of the jigs I tied today. But you're definitely going to want one of those. Um, you're going to need a bobbin. A bobbin is what holds your spool of thread. And uh, you think you could see it here. The, uh, the bobbin or the spool is held down here uh, and it's just pressure that holds that in place. And then you run your thread up through the shaft of the bobbin. And that's what you use to uh, wrap your line uh, around, your, around your hook and uh, to put together the jig. You definitely want to get a bobbin. Now, getting that tiny piece of <laughs> of thread through the through the shaft of that bobbin that could be a challenge if you're just trying to uh, hand feed it through there. The the uh, threads that are used for fly tying and jig tying can be very very thin, and so to make it quick and easy to thread that bobbin, you want to get a stainless steel bobbin threader. Stainless steel bobbin threader. Now, um, look, uh, my channel is not sponsored by anybody. You're going to see some name brands here. Uh, uh, Echo Fish, Fishing Tools. Uh, a number of my tools are by Dr. Slick. The, the uh, Vice is by Griffin. Um, look, there are a lot of different name brands out there, and uh, you might have 
friends who uh, are already into fly tying, jig tying that would recommend other name brands. Uh, I'm not here to push any particular name brand. I'm just showing you that the tools, just showing you the tools that I have. So, you know, do your due diligence, look around, uh, ask other fishermen who are already into this art, uh, this craft, in, this fishing craft of fly tying and jig tying and uh, find out what's in your price point, you know, find out what others recommend to you and go with, go with that. You're going to want a really good pair of scissors and uh, these scissors are from Dr. Slick. Uh, they are basically surgical grade scissors. They are very, very sharp and you need something really, really sharp to be able to, to finely cut threads and hairs and, and, and that sort. And so, so you want to get that. I also have what's called a hair stacking tool. You just put the hairs of your feather or other other hairs or furs that you're using. Those will stack those up and then uh, you separate th these parts and line them up for you. And uh, uh, and you'll maybe want to get one of those. That's a little more optional, but uh, but I have one of those. And then I also have Loon Outdoor Head Cement. Now you can use something like this. Um, I, some of my favorite, uh, uh, jig tires on YouTube don't use any kind of cement at all. Um, but I've already found that this is helpful to me as a beginner, uh, because I noticed a couple of my bodies, uh, were moving a little bit because I didn't wrap them tight enough. And using this head cement, uh, as you're finishing the jig, uh, you just wipe this around the, the base of the head and where the material touches kind of locks it into place. Um, I'm already finding that this is, uh, this is useful. So you, you might want to get something like that. Some people use uh, uh, nail polish, uh, clear nail polish to do that. And so uh, these are the tools that I'm using to, to, tie, uh, to tie my jigs. Now there are other tools that you'll, you may want to pick up as you get more proficient in doing this. I know that'll probably be the case for me, but but I know this is, these are the things I needed to get started. Those are all the tools I, I have, and I was able to tie some jigs today. So I, I know I, can, I, I, I need and I can use at least these tools, uh, but there will probably be others as well. All right, next, let's look at some of the materials uh, that you'll want for, for tying your jigs. All right, well, this probably goes without saying, but we'll say it anyways. You're going to need a jig head. <laughs> You're going to need a hook. You're going to need something to uh, build this, uh, uh, this handmade jig with. Now, of course, there are a gajillion different types and sizes and looks for jig heads. This one in particular that uh, you see on the screen is a 1 16th ounce round head jig, uh, uh, the jig heads that I'm using right now are made by Charles Brown down in Texas with uh, Elite Crappie Jigs. I'll have his link down there. Uh, but uh, And again, no one is sponsoring my page. No one has asked me to mention their, their YouTube channels or their companies or anything like that. Uh, I'm not getting anything for sharing this with you. But I, 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 like, to, I like to promote and help out other people if I can. And I've bought, uh, I've bought uh, some jig bodies and some jig heads from Charles. And, and uh, it seems like a nice guy. He's provided me with good service. And so shout out to, shout out to Charles. So, um, but you want to have, uh, you want to have a jig. You want to have a jig head. And so what this is, is a 1 16th ounce uh, rounded jig head painted. Charles painted these. Um, you can actually paint your jig heads yourself. You might know that already, but you may want to start doing that as you get into this, then to this art form. I probably, I probably will, but you don't have to use painted jig heads. You can go to Dick's Sporting Goods or Walmart or wherever you buy your standard lead jig heads. And you can just use a, a, a bare jig head of the shape, whether it's football size, football shape or, or round or, or whatever kind you use. And, and you can, make jigs and hand tie jigs just using the most basic jig heads that you you know find over the counter uh, at your local sporting goods store so you definitely want uh want a jig head and then you need you need thread 
right? You got to have thread. And what has been rec recommended to me is UTC thread. Is that blurry? That's a little blurry in it. Uh, there. Still a little blurry, or is that just my eyeglasses? Anyways, uh, UTC Ultra Thread is what has come most recommended to me. You can get this online in, in many different fly tying uh, locations online or fly tying shops. Um, typically, it comes in uh, 70 or 140 denier. Uh, those numbers basically talk about the thickness of the thread. Uh, 70, is, these are the two most common used for fly and jig tying. Uh, 70 denier is very thin, and a lot of guys use that. Uh, it's been recommended to me, though, to start out with 140. Because, uh, as you can see, the the hook is exposed. Uh, oftentimes, when you're, uh, the hook tip there, the point is exposed while you're tying. And that very thin thread, even at 140, it's really thin. I was amazed at how easy it separates and comes apart. Uh, but 70 is even thinner still, and you uh, scrape the uh, tip of your hook uh, with your thread enough times, you're going to snap that thread. And so 140 denier was recommended to me. Uh, you, you get it in every conceivable color you can think of, and so you definitely want some want some thread. Uh, I've got, uh, I started out with black white those are of course are too basic and then some of the colors i'm thinking of using as far as my jig bodies like uh, pink or red or uh, colors like that yellow uh, i got thread to match to match those so you you want that gotta have thread gotta have thread let me reset up my camera here there we go all right uh let's talk about tail material uh, one of the most popular tail materials is marabou. Marabou. Uh, now, what I'm holding in front of you is the wrong kind of marabou, <laughs> I learned, uh, for tying tails. It's not really good for tails. A uh, woolly bugger, uh, uh, from where the name of the popular fly, the woolly bugger fly, comes from, uses this kind of hair material. Uh, good for bodies and other things, but not really the best for tail material. But marabou, though... Marabou is, Marib um, other kinds, longer stemmed uh, marabou uh, is really good for, for tail material if you're going to put a tail on your jig. Uh, another really good tail material is bucktail, uh, bucktail. And it comes in all kinds of colors. Of course, uh, the, most of them have the brown down the center there and then the outer color, uh, the white is dyed to just about every color you can think of. You can also get the marabou in, in different colors. So uh, those are two of the primary tail material. You can also get into uh, plastics and, and that sort of thing. Uh, that's above my pay grade right now. Then you want to get for yourself what's called chenille. Chenille. Now, I was, I was a little concerned. I spent five bucks for this tiny little pack. But then I pulled it out of the pack and unraveled it. And I tied a few jigs, and I didn't even make a dent in what's in this little bag uh, for 4 or $5. I'm going to be able to, uh, with just this color alone, I'm going to be able to tie dozens and dozens of jigs. So not, not too expensive. Uh, the, the jigs I tied today, I used, I used um, a dark olive, and I used fluorescent blue. And then I used three colored jig heads, gray, uh, chartreuse and black that's what i had on hand and so i've got six different jigs that i tied using those combinations but but you want to get chenille and i'm telling you again the the sky's the limit as far as color uh fluorescence and uh, different things and you can you'll never run out of options you'll never run out of ideas uh, and i think i wonder if that's where uh, it goes from craft to art form. <laughs> you know, uh, as I look at some of these color combinations, does that really catch a fish? And uh, the the few uh, really good jig tires that I watch, I've, I've actually seen them fish with their jigs, you know, on their videos, and they're actually catching fish. Because it would be real easy to say, oh, I've got the next greatest jig, this fantastic new combination. And all they did is, well, I got this color lying around and I'll put this jig together and I'll advertise it on, on YouTube as the next greatest jig and they've never fished it or even caught a fish with it. So 
Um, so, uh, but again, you know, you can really turn this into an art form. Uh, I think the goal is to catch fish with them. Uh, so, you know, depending on what the bug life or, or the, uh, the bait fish are like in your area, uh, I'm sure you're going to be able to find color combinations to match, get close to what the fish are seeing in the water. Um, another material, this is kind of like a highlight material. You could use a little bit of this. It's called flash, flash material. It's very uh, iridescent and, and uh, flare, fluorescent, sparkly. And you add strips of this to the body or to the tail and it adds flash when the sunlight hits it or light hits it. It sparkles and flashes and it's another another fish attractant. Now, again, there, there are a lot more. Um, uh, I am merely scratching the surface. I think my wife is a little concerned. Uh, in years past, I could get carried away with a hobby. <laughs> but, uh, but there are a lot of other different materials you can get. I'm going to put a link to the uh, online store. I think they're out of Utah. Um, that uh, where I bought uh, my last batch of stuff, I've got uh, I've got a bunch of stuff coming. I've I've purchased from a couple of places. Um, right now, I'm trying to stick to what is being recommended by YouTube YouTubers that I follow, uh, jig tires, fishermen that I follow, uh, instead of trying to reinvent the wheel. Uh, I'm I'm going with uh, things I've been told by people I trust. So. Whether or not you trust me or not, well, I, I don't know. That's up to you. <laughs> but that's all I have right now as far as material. And even with my limited supply, and even though I'm just getting started out, I'm just trying to figure all of this out, I've been able to tie six jigs today. And uh, look, if you if you are good at this craft, you might, you might look at my jigs. You might see my jigs and say, oh... Uh, Tony is like the five-year-old engaged in finger painting. <laughs> that won't hurt my feelings. Uh, I'm just getting started. So I, I don't claim that these are the best. Uh, I don't claim these are the best looking. I don't even know if these are going to catch fish. I haven't even fished them yet. I can't wait to get out there and try these Try these tomorrow. I'm so excited. Uh, but I want to show you. I want to show you the, the six jigs that I tied today. And, uh, and how I did that. All right, these are my jigs. These are the jigs that I tied today. Uh, yeah, if I sound a little excited and if you think I'm a little too impressed with myself, please forgive me. <laughs> but this was fun. This was a lot of fun. I, I've got here six jigs. Uh, they're all basically the, the same jig, but just... Uh, just slight variations to the patterns. It's as you can see, I've got the three here in fluorescent blue. Uh, all have a white uh, bucktail uh, tail on them, uh, and the difference with each one of the color patterns is a different color jig head. So I got black, uh, silver, or gray, and uh, chartreuse. And again, both in the flore all uh, the jigs. Three of the jigs are in the fluorescent blue, and uh, three are in the dark. dark Olive. I am going to do a tan and green jig, whether it catches anything or not. The reason being, tan and green were the colors of the uniform I wear, wore for the L.A. County Sheriff's Department for 20 years. There will be a tan and green jig at some point. So, I, again, I spent a lot of time just watching videos. And, and I appreciate those who are hand-tying uh, jigs and doing it on video uh, that they do it nice and close. Uh, I can tell you if there are any dirt under their fingernails when they're doing them. <laughs> and, uh, and they take their time to explain, you know, how they're wrapping, what to do when you're wrapping the thread, how to put on the tails, how long the tails ought to be, how to wrap the jig bodies, how to add the flash, all of that. It's, it's very, very detailed. At some point, I hope to begin um, providing that kind of content as well. But I want to wait until I get a little better at it. Uh, so it's not just a comedy. Uh, but uh, having done that, watched all the videos uh, that I've watched, lots of them. I've watched lots of videos. Um, I, I admit I was a little nervous getting started. I said, okay, it's time. It's time. I've got to tie my first jig. Uh, I just didn't want to fail. I'm uh, anal that way. <laughs> uh, but I, I started tying them. 
And, uh, and even as novice as I am, uh, even as new to this as I am, even as uncoordinated as I am as a 58 year old man, not that all 58 year olds are uncoordinated, but, but I'm not the most coordinated person. I tied each of these jigs in under five minutes. Um, and again, these are, these are simple, these are simple jigs. Uh, these are simple patterns, combinations, uh, and I wanted to start st simple, work my way up. Uh, it can get very, very complicated as you start to add legs and and start to use foam to make them look like ant bodies and spider bodies and things like that. Again, that's way above my pay grade. But these uh, first jigs that I've done uh, took me less than five minutes to make one. And so... You know, I could see where guys can pound out a lot of jigs and uh, make them available to others or just have, you know, a large personal collection and lots of different variations uh, to uh, to try in their own waters. And so I share that with you, not to boast at, at, at how quickly I was able to tie these, but just to let you know that you can do this. If I can do this, you can do this. Uh, if you have ever had a thought of tying your own flies, I think flies would be more of a challenge because uh, they're certainly smaller uh, oftentimes. Uh, but if you're a pan fisherman like I am, if you like to catch crappie and bluegill, um, bass, you know, trout, uh, trout would be close, more of a, a fly presentation, I think. But certainly in, in uh, as far as fishing for the, the standard group of panfish, perch, and what have you, if you've ever thought of tying your own jigs, uh, I don't want to. I don't want to cause you to stumble. I don't want to encourage you to spend money you don't have. Um, but uh, but you can do this. If I can do this, if uh, if if I could watch some videos, and then sit down, and in less than thirty minutes tie a half a dozen jigs, you can do it too. And so I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. So. Um, I think that's all I've got for you for now. If you've got questions, uh, leave those questions in the comment section below. I may not have the answer, but I know one thing for sure. I'll help you find the answer. I would love to do that. Love to serve you in that way. And uh, uh, I uh, again, I plan to use these tomorrow uh, out in Jasper County at, at my friend Jeff and Jan's pond out there. And <laughs> they might hear me in neighboring counties if I actually catch a fish on a jig that I made with my own two hands. I am going to let out a loud roar, I assure you. <laughs> Birds will be leaving the trees. Deer will be bounding away from the pond if they're near. Cats and dogs will hide together. I'm going to roar <laughs> if I actually catch a fish on one of my own jigs tomorrow. Okay, enough of that. Hey, again, I just want to remind you, that I am doing a contest, a giveaway. I think giveaway is a better term than contest. I am doing a giveaway. I am going to bless at least two fishermen in the United States with their 2023 fishing license. Uh, I am going to give away some other uh, materials, uh, some other uh, tackle and what have you. Uh, just, just to say thank you uh, for those of you who subscribe to the channel. Uh, we we broke the 500 mark not long ago. I know that's not much, but it's exciting to me. Uh, and you all mean a lot to me for following the channel. And uh, we're working our way toward uh, the 1,000 hour mark, uh, that that, plat that, uh, that benchmark for YouTube channels as far as watch hours and things like that. Uh, we still have a long way to go, but uh, but I'm enjoying the process. And, and to, so, so to celebrate our one-year anniversary, which was last month, uh, I'm going to give away a couple of fishing licenses for 2023. Uh, I want to bless you by by covering your fishing license cost, at least the basic license in your state. And then I want to give away some other things too. I might. <laughs> you may not want them. <laughs> you may not want them, but I might hand tie some jigs and say, hey, here's some, here's some jigs from Tony made special just for you. Uh, so uh, click on the link here at the end of the video. Uh, you'll find the link also in the description below. Uh, you're going to find links to everything I've showed you today. I will provide that. And again, what, I, what I've what i shared in this video, these are merely examples 
of the tools and the materials to tie jigs. Um, it might just give you a place to start to start looking. You might decide, yeah, I'm going to get everything that Tony suggested. Or you might say, okay, well, I'm, I can find it cheaper here, or I can find a better one here, or my friend recommends this. Uh, more power to you. Absolutely. Again, um, no one sponsoring this channel. I don't get anything from um, uh, naming names or naming products or things like that. This is just what I have. And so I hope I hope it's been helpful to you. I hope it's been uh, encouraging uh, a little bit to you. And uh, I want to thank you for joining me for this edition of the... Uh, I've got so many podcasts going, I forgot where I am. Uh, for this edition of Iowa Pan Fishing. Uh, until next time, everyone, God bless and let's go fishing. Ha, <laughs> ha,